Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to another Sunday service. It's good to be here, and I'm glad to have you here as well, joining me for today's service. I trust that you're fine. I trust that you've been keeping well. Good, good. You're welcome to service. It's always a pleasure to be in the house of God. And like I said last week, the house of God is not a four-wall building. The house of God is you and I and God in our midst, okay? So welcome to today's service. And I'm looking forward to us having a great, great time. Okay, so we're still continuing with our theme for the month, which is Bible character study. Yes, and um, today particularly, we're going to be looking at, be mindful of bad company. So the characters we're going to be studying today it's going to teach us something around being mindful of bad company. So our title for today's Bible lesson is Be Mindful of Bad Company. But before we get on with all of that, we're going to take a short word of prayer. You know, like we always say, we can't do, we can't do anything by ourselves. We always need the strength and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So let's close our eyes and pray and welcome the Holy Spirit into our midst okay ready let's pray in jesus name our precious heavenly father it is another beautiful sunday and we thank you for the opportunity to be alive and well we're here again fellowshipping together to learn your word to draw closer to you and to be more like what you want us to be holy spirit we ask you to come and teach us as we study these Bible characters today, help us to learn the lessons that are in it that we ought to learn so that we would be better children and we'll be able to impact our world positively. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Okay, having done that now, we are going to join the praise and worship team for a section of praise and worship. Remember, God has been good to you. If you think back, I'm sure you would find one thing or two things or three things or seven things or many things that God has done for you. So he deserves your praise. He deserves my praise. So let's go ahead, join the praise team, dance, sing, glorify God with our hearts. And then when we'll come back after that, we will get into today's Bible lesson proper. So see you right after praise and worship. Who's happy to be in the presence of the Lord? Somebody shout hallelujah! Hallelujah!
Welcome back. I trust that you totally enjoyed that praise and worship session. I did. I did. To God be all the praise, all the glory, because he deserves all of our worship. Okay, so we'll go right on straight to our lesson for today. Like I said before we went um, for praise and worship, I mentioned that our title for today is Be Mindful of Bad Company. You may wonder, what is bad company? Or who is bad company? First, company is someone or people that you roll with. Let me use that word. Basically, people you do things with, you spend your time with, you know, that's company. Now, bad company are people that are not good, of good reputation, or they are of bad influence. They influence you negatively. That's bad company, you know, and our lesson today is going to teach us to be mindful of such people. We don't need such people in our lives. We are children of God. We are Christians and we are supposed to shine the light for others to see. But we can't shine the light if we keep bad company. There's something they say, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. So that means if you keep bad company, you're most likely going to be at least assumed to be not a good person or to be a bad person. Whereas, if you keep good company, anybody who sees you will believe that you are a good person. And that is what we are expected to be as sons and daughters of God. Okay, so our main text for today's lesson is from the book of Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. And the second one is, Exodus chapter 23 verse 2. Exodus chapter 23 verse 2. And I'd like to read these two scriptures. There is another scripture, but let's look at these um, verses first, then we'll talk about the other one. Okay. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 14. And it reads, Without wise leadership, a nation falls. There is safety in having many advisors. Without wise leadership, a nation falls. There is safety in having many advisors. So you see, you can't, you can't get wise or good advice from bad company. It's not possible. Remember, a, 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 a tree will only bear the right fruit. You can never see a mango tree bearing an orange fruit. Likewise, if a person or a group of people are bad company, if they are negative company, they can never give you good advice. So do not expect to keep bad company and get good advice. And the passage we just read here says, without wise leadership, a nation falls. Which means to say that if we do not keep the right company and get the right advice, we can destroy our lives, okay? So that's very important. Then secondly, Exodus chapter 23, verse 2. I'm reading again. It says, you must not follow the crowd in doing wrong. You must not follow the crowd in doing wrong. When you are called to testify in a dispute, do not be swayed by the crowd to twist justice. So this, is, this, um, this scripture in Exodus is coming from another angle. One is keeping the um, right um, company and getting wise counsel, wise advice from the right company. The second one from Exodus is, do not follow the crowd. Don't do things because everybody else is doing it. No. Remember the um, story of Martha, Mary and Martha in week one. They were two different people. They did things differently. And I remember um, the children then said it was okay to be different. So if you find 
the crowd, everybody doing the same thing, but you know it's wrong. You do not have to do it. Don't follow the crowd. Don't say because everybody's doing it, I have to tag along. No, it's okay to be you. It's okay to be different as long as you know you are on the right path. So Proverbs is encouraging us not to follow the crowd to do the wrong thing, but to stand out from the crowd. You Okay? All right. Then there is an interesting story that buttresses this lesson from the book of first Kings chapter 12. I want to believe that you are writing down all these Bible passages so that at your own time, you can go back and read them again. First Kings chapter 12. There, there is a story of two Kings and one was named Rehoboam and the second one was named Jeroboam. Right. Now Rehoboam had just been crowned king and so his subjects had come after his father had passed as the son of Solomon, who's the son of David, King David. Yeah. So after his father had passed, he had been crowned king. He had just been crowned king and you know, his subjects had come to acknowledge him and to pledge, pledge their allegiance to him. And then when they came there, you know, they said to him, oh, there's something we'd like for you to do for us. Um, we were, your father burdened us with a lot of taxes and labor, but now you're the new king. Can you please reduce these taxes and the labor? If you do that, we are going to promise you that we will be forever and ever and ever and ever loyal to you. We will serve you with all our hearts. And Rehoboam said, okay, give me three days. Let me go and think about it and I'll give you my answer. And what he, did he do? He went to um, his father's advisors, you know, people who had advised his father. So they were experienced and they were older. He went to them and told them, oh, see, this is the situation. What would you advise me to do? And they told him, yes, that's a good thing. Reduce their taxes, reduce their labor so that you can get their complete loyalty. That would be good for your reign as a king. That would be good for your kingdom. Rehoboam said, okay. Then right after he finished with that set of people, he now went to his friends, young men, people who were inexperienced in the art of leadership. And he went to ask them, okay, see what these people requested of me. What would you advise me to do? And guess what? Those ones they said, no, don't do that. If you do that, they will probably think you're a weak king. What you'd rather do is tell them, oh, I am going to increase your taxes. I am going to increase your labor. In fact, I'm going to make life more difficult for you than what you had during my father's reign. And guess what Rehoboam did? On the third day, when everybody had gathered to get his feedback, Rehoboam stood before the people and said, look, if my father, if you think my father was mean to you, just get ready because I'm going to do worse than what my father did to you. I'm going to increase your taxes. I'm going to increase your labor. I'm going to make life difficult for you. Can you imagine that? And what happened? The people stood up and said, oh, in that case, we are not going to be loyal to you. We will not acknowledge you as our king. In fact, we will go our separate way and leave you to yourself. And that was the beginning of the division in the kingdom. So a set of people left and went their way, whereas the others remained and acknowledged Rehoboam as the king. Imagine doing that. He left a wise counsel and took advice from people who were inexperienced, people who didn't know anything about leadership, about being king, about ruling a kingdom. What kind of crowd are you moving with? Who are your friends? What do they tell you? What do they advise you to do? 
Is their advice contrary to the values and principles that your mom and dad, your family has instilled in you? Their actions that they are luring you to come and be a part of, is it contrary to what you know you are supposed to do as a Christian? Contrary to what shows you or what reflects that you are from a Christian home? Do you leave your home? And when you're outside at school or wherever else you may find yourself outside your home, you join the crowd to do anything else, forsaking what your parents had told you. Remember what we read in Proverbs. When you take bad advice, it will destroy your life. Bad advice will always, always, always destroy your life. Nothing good can come out from bad advice. Then, the second king, remember I said it's a story of two kings in that chapter of the Bible in 1 Kings chapter 12. Now, the second king is called King, or was called King Jeroboam. So after that group separated from King Rehoboam, the group that said they were not going to uh, be loyal to him, after they separated and went their own way, Jeroboam became their king. And what did Jeroboam do? Instead of learning from the mistake of Rehoboam and to be a better king, he took negative advice again. People told him to erect golden calves, idols. Remember, these are the people of God. These are children of Israel and they are a people of God. They are people that God set aside for himself. But King Jeroboam took the wrong advice from the wrong set of people who advised him to erect, instead of continuing to worship the God of heaven, who has been their God, to rather erect golden calves, idols made of gold that the people will worship. And he went ahead and did it. And it vexed God so much, separating God's people from God. Bad advice. Running with the wrong company, taking bad advice, engaging in wrong actions and activities would separate you from the life that God wants you to live. And God does not want us to suffer destruction. No, God wants the best for us. God wants us to live a happy, a fulfilling, and a fruitful life. And God wants us to remain in constant relationship with him. So he does not want us to go with the wrong crowd, learn the wrong things, and, you know, influence our life negatively, do things that will not pay off in the future. That is not the wish, that is not the will, that is not the plan and purpose of God for our lives. So what are the lessons here to learn? We should be mindful of the circle of friends that we keep. Who are your friends? In your estates, where you live, at school, who are your friends? On social media, for those of you who already have social media accounts or you, you, know, you have um, smartphones and you can go online and all of that, who are your friends? Who are you following? You know, recently I asked my friend, I said to her, if you were to choose your friends all over again, we've been friends for at least eight years now. And I said to her, if you were to choose your friends all over again, will you choose me? She didn't hesitate to say, yes, yes, I will. And I said, why? She said, because you've been of good influence to me. We've grown together, we're still growing, you know, we learn together, we influence each other's, life, each other's lives positively, and so on and so forth. And those are the kind of company that we should choose and keep. 
who are your friends tell me your friends or show me your friends and i'll tell you who you are if you if you roll with the wrong people it's only a matter of time before they would influence you now am i saying you should not be friendly with people no to be friendly and to keep us friends they're two different things so that person that you know is not of good character that boy that girl in your class or might even be on social media that you know is not of an exemplary character is not a role model you don't have to be friends with them doesn't mean you can't say hi hello to them perhaps if you're in the same school in the same class you can say hello or hi to them when you see them but you don't have to have any close friendship with them because if you do it's only a matter of time before they will start influencing you to do the wrong things and the more you do wrong things it's only a matter of time as well you get the repercussions good seed good fruit bad seed bad fruit okay then the second lesson we can learn from this is we should pick our friends wisely more or less the same thing with the first point pick your friends wisely what are your values what are the values what are the things mom and dad has told you are important for you for your growth for your development what are those things you've learned from church even what are those christian values what are those moral values you've learned they are to be pointers for choosing who your friends are when you're when when you feel that okay you want to get to know someone to be friends with someone you should ask yourself does this person share the same values as me what is his character like what is her character like because eventually they will be influenced by you and you will be influenced by them so you have to be very very mindful of that then the third one is we should not follow the crowd FOMO fear of missing out is something that is predominant amongst you know people within this age range and above oh everybody's doing it so i want to do it oh everybody is having it so i want to have it why do you want to have it why do you want to do it is it because it's a good thing that you should emulate is it because it's a good trait that you should emulate i remember when people started sagging boys started sagging i was much younger then i had an immediate older brother and he would try to join the crowd i mean when secondary school then he would try to join you know to do like his classmates his friends you know in the neighborhood in the estate to sag but he would not dare to do it at home because the first day my dad caught him like he addressed him like come here sit down why do you want to dress like this why do you want to do this why do you why you know and he stopped doing it at home all trends are not for you it's not everything that you should copy copy only those things that will add value to your life copy only those things that are in line with your values things that are important to you and when you see people doing things that you know is wrong do not join them to do it because everybody is doing it remember it is okay to be different it is okay to be different it is okay to be yourself in fact it is more beautiful to be your, i mean why would you want to be anyone else why would you want to be everybody else when you can be your unique self okay so don't be influenced by negative trends it will not lead to anything good trust me there is nothing to gain from bad actions there is nothing to gain from bad character there is nothing to gain 
from bad attitude. There is nothing to gain from bad advice. There is nothing to gain from, you know, running with the wrong crowd. There's absolutely nothing to gain. Okay. So you have to, you know, continue to be who you are, continue to abide by the values, the things your mom and dad have taught you, the things you've learned in church, the things that the Holy Spirit has taught you, things you've learned from the word of God. Though, in fact, the word of God should be one of the most um, things that influences us. We should, we should, we should, we should take most of our influence from what the word of God says and not from what every other person is doing. God will help us in Jesus name. So in concluding, I, I want to believe that we've learned one or two things today. Like I said, you do not have to follow the crowd if they are doing the wrong thing. You can speak up, say, no, this is wrong. You can find a group of people bullying someone for no just cause. Don't just walk away. Don't just join them. Oh, oh, let me join them so that they'll think I'm cool. No. Stand apart and speak up and say, this is wrong. You either stop it now or I'm going to report to the school authority. You can do that. Be that shining light. Okay? God will bless us in Jesus' name. But like, you know, we, we always like to to say that there is nothing we can do by ourselves. It is not easy to not follow the crowd. It is not easy to not um, allow ourselves to be influenced by the cool, in quotes, cool people who might be doing the wrong things. We are always going to need the, 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 the grace and the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit cannot be in us if we don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So it all comes back to, do you have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? Do you have a relationship with Christ? Have you given your life to God? Because until you do that, then the Holy Spirit cannot come live in you. And until he lives in you, you cannot be empowered to um, be different to be bold and to be able to be wise enough to pick the right company that you should run with that would influence your life positively. It takes wisdom because some people are pretentious. Sometimes you think somebody is a good person and you become friends with them. And then the closer you get to them, you now discover that, ah, these people are not good for me. So we need the, the, the Holy Spirit to help us discern people. But should you even find yourself in such a situation that someone you thought was a good person, you now realize the person is not a good person. It's not the right company for you to keep. Please, immediately withdraw from that friendship. Don't say, oh, we've been friends for so long. Oh, I really like this person. I cannot stop being friends. No. Once you discover they are not good company, please immediately withdraw from them. Don't care about what they will think or say. Even if they approach you and say, oh, you, you, you no longer come around. We, we no longer hang out. Be bold to tell them, oh, sorry, I just realized we do not share the same values. So I'm sorry, we can't be friends anymore. Withdraw. By so doing, trust me, you are protecting yourself from harm and destruction. You do not need the wrong crowd. Remember what happened to Rehoboam? and Jeroboam. Rehoboam divided a kingdom because of wrong advice. And Jeroboam instituted idol worshipping because of wrong advice. So we have to be careful. So should you be um, listening to me today and you have not given your life to God, you don't have the Holy Spirit, that means he cannot help you. It is an opportunity for you to do so today. Would you like to say a word of prayer, giving your life to Christ and asking the Holy Spirit to come and live inside of you? If you'd like to do that, please place your hand on your heart and let's say this prayer together. In Jesus' name, 
Heavenly Father, I thank you because you have just made me realize that I need you, that I cannot live my life by myself. And I thank you because Jesus Christ has already died for me for the forgiveness of my sins. So right now, right here, I receive the forgiveness of my sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I ask you, Father, to please accept me as your child and give me the Holy Spirit to live inside of me, to lead me, to guide me, so that in all my ways, I'll be able to please you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Awesome. If you have said that prayer, automatically you are now a child of God. So welcome to the family of God. God bless you greatly for becoming part of the family of God. Now, before we call it a day on today's um, Bible lesson, we're going to take a memory verse from the book of Romans chapter 15 verse 4 and it says, for everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. I'm going to take it again. Romans chapter 15 verse 4. For everything that was written in the past was written to encourage us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. So everything we're learning today, like we're learning about Bible characters since this month of October, that, that there for us to learn from, to encourage us and to give us hope, okay? So I hope that the things we've learned from today's lesson would, um, would hold them close to our heart and that as we go into the new week, we would remember to be mindful of the company we'll keep, to choose our friends wisely and to, you know, be of um, good reputation, okay? Wherever we find ourselves. Never to follow the crowd, but to be bold enough to stand apart and be different. Speaking the truth always. God will help us in Jesus' name. It's been wonderful sharing this time with you. I trust that you enjoyed yourself just as much as I did. God bless you so much for being here today. And um, for the rest of the week, do take care and um, keep well. And I hope to see you again some other time. Bye for now. Everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that we might have hope in Christ and trust in God might have hope in Christ and trust trust in God everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so Was written to teach us so that